everyone this is varsha in today's tutorial we'll learn how to paint this three different types of landscapes for today's tutorial we'll be using acrylics and brushes by color by felix these are the color tones that i'll be using for all the three landscapes first we'll start with the floral field here i'm using white medium yellow and orange here i'm using a round mop brush to start with the sky it helps you to achieve a smoother blend after applying a layer of white we'll add in yellow to it and we'll build a gradient from yellow to orange try to work fast with acrylics to get a smoother blend as you know acrylics dry quickly as we are moving downwards try to make the yellow color tone slightly darker mixing yellow and orange and then we'll merge it with our previous layer We are done with the base color for sky. For clouds, we'll be using burnt umber, mixing it with same orange yellow mix and adding white to it. Using a round brush, just randomly add in the cloud strokes. For wider strokes here I am switching to a flat brush it helps to cover more area Adding burnt umber to make the values darker To make the clouds look more warmer adding yellow and orange and mixing it with white and adding a layer of clouds to match it with the base Mixing hookers green and burnt umber for the grassy land using the same flat brush. Combining medium yellow hookers green and white to color the front grassy land. Adding more white to the same color to color the front area. Completely color the front section with hookers green as we have to paint the florals and grass on top of it. So this is just a base layer 
and to make it slightly darker at the bottom just combine it with burnt umber adding pathlo blue to hookers green and burnt umber to paint the bushes in the background For painting the bushes in the front, I am using a white hard bristle brush and using the dabbing technique. Using the same dabbing technique and with lighter tone of green, just adding few details in the background. For the florals, we are using vermilion color and the same dabbing technique. Make sure the florals which are in the background try to paint them smaller and as we move forward to the foreground you can paint them individually with a zero size brush. So now I am switching to a round brush to paint the florals in the front. Try to paint them more defined and larger in size so for painting the florals in the front you can add in thick layer of color it will add in more texture to your florals now combining viridian and burnt umber to paint the grass here i am using a smaller size detailer brush to paint the grass stroke the more thinner you paint the more realistic your grass stroke will look Once you are done with the darker color grass stroke then combine the same color with medium yellow to make it light and add a second layer of grass strokes keep on adding multiple layers of grass strokes until you are satisfied with the results and later on you can redefine the florals with the same vermilion color and to add bit depth to it you can just give few highlights with orange mixing lemon yellow and hookers green and adding in the second layer of grass adding white to the vermilion color to give in the floral highlights
also adding white to the green to give the grass highlights Now the second painting will be painting of waterfall for that we are using hookers green viridian pathlo blue burnt umber and black combining viridian pathlo blue and burnt umber for the base coloring the base with the flat brush and then as we move downwards we'll make it lighter by combining it with hookers green Now using a mop brush to get rid of the brush strokes with the mop brush it gets easier to create a smoother background Again combining all the colors for the center portion and as we'll move downwards toward the waterfall reflection we'll add in more of hookers green to it So here we are done with the base now with the black color we'll do the base layer for the stones Try to bring in variations in the shapes of stone or else it will look unrealistic
in this one the background is completely filled with leaves so using emerald green to paint the first layer of leaves use a smaller size round brush for painting the leaves then fill in the complete base layer with the leaf strokes we are going to add multiple color layers of leaves so entirely fill in the base area first and then we'll switch the color for the second layer So now we'll start painting a waterfall. For that I'm using a size 0 brush and white color. Whenever you are painting a waterfall to make it look more realistic, don't start with a plain white color. Mix it with a tint of the base color. Like here the base color is viridian green. So I'll combine it with a tint of viridian and then white. And the second layer for the highlights you can use in like a plain white color. So it will give it more realistic look. Adding in second layer of leaves by mixing viridian and lemon yellow. Try to overlap the waterfall strokes that you have painted. Now using burnt umber, yellow ochre and burnt sienna for adding details to the stone. For the first layer we will combine burnt sienna and burnt umber and add in the first layer. Make sure you are just covering the top of the stone and giving the highlights with yellow ochre. Just don't worry too much about your stroke, just randomly add in your strokes to add in more texture to your stones.
For the final layer of highlight, mix more lemon yellow to the viridian color and just select few areas and add in highlight in those areas. Mixing warmly an orange and white for the last layer of leaves. Adding highlights to the waterfall, here I am just using a plain white. As we move away from the waterfall, try to make your stroke slightly thinner. Also don't repeat the pattern of your waves, try to paint each and every wave very different from one another or else it will look very unnatural. Adding in the second layer of strokes by mixing hookers, green and burnt umber. Here I am mixing medium yellow with white to add in more highlights. It will help you to bring in more depth to your painting. Adding random stroke on the bottom right corner with yellow ochre and burnt umber. Lastly you can add in few branches over the waterfall. So the last one is the forest painting so we'll start by doing the base and then we'll come to the foreground. So for the base we are painting a clear sky. 
For that we are using Pathlo blue and mixing it with white. Try to create a sky gradient for that we will add in more white towards the bottom. Foreground mixing burnt umber and black and entirely coloring the front area. While working with acrylics always start with the darker tone so it will help you to add more depth to your painting. Using the thinner brush, we will add branches in the background. Fill in both the sides of the foreground by adding tree trunks of different shapes and size. Now we'll be blocking the foreground using hookers green and mixing it with burnt umber and black using the same hard bristol flat brush and the dabbing technique. While using the dabbing technique don't add water to your paints. Hold your brush vertically and dab it on the canvas surface. This technique helps to cover more area and gives you a realistic bushy effect.
using yellow ochre and burnt sienna for painting the road here we are painting a forest pathway and it has a muddy texture to it so we'll achieve that by adding multiple layers of yellow ochre and burnt sienna define the forest pathway by adding the first layer with yellow ochre using a flat brush observe the reference and follow the shapes here as you can see the pathway is narrow at the start and it gets wider as we move towards the front create multiple variations of color tones by combining yellow ochre and burnt sienna redefining the darker values by combining burnt umber and black For painting the leaves we will use vermilion, orange and burnt sienna. For the first layer mix vermilion and burnt sienna and use the same dabbing technique. While using the dabbing technique for painting the leaves just gently dab your brush onto the canvas surface. Don't apply too much pressure while dabbing or else you will end up getting heavy strokes. Try to create different variation of color tones by mixing vermilion, orange and burnt sienna and cover the entire area using the same dabbing technique. Adding in few darker strokes by using burnt umber and black mix. Follow the reference to block in the areas with different color values. Here for blocking in the entire background we'll switch and combine different shades of vermilion, orange and burnt sienna. Using orange to entirely cover the remaining background area.
using medium yellow and hookers green to fill in the bushes in the front. Mixing medium yellow and orange for the next layer of leaves. We'll also give some dabs on the road area to show the fallen leaves. Adding in new branches and redefining the previous ones. Highlighting the leaves using medium yellow. Mixing lemon yellow and hookers green to highlight the bushes. Adding the highlights on top of the road with yellow ochre. To add more depth to the road, redefine the darker values using burnt umber and black. Mixing white to yellow ochre to add more highlights.
defining the leaves with lemon yellow Redefining the leaves fallen onto the road using red, orange and green. To make the forest look more dense, giving few more dabs by combining burnt umber and red.
होप दैट यू एन्जॉय दिस टूडोरियल इफ यू रिक्रिएट दिस पेंटिंग डू टैग अस ऑन इंस्टाग्राम आर हैंडल्स आर मैंशन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल थैंक यू